So, uh, our last uh, speaker today is Roberto Lucchetti from Politecnico de Milano, and he's going to talk about strong Nash equilibria in fighting games. So, uh, it's our pleasure to have you here. This is your thank talk. you. It's uh, a pleasure also for me to be here and in Alicante. I, uh, Spanish people are always very, very gentle and nice. The only problem I have with them is that they feed me too much. But <laughs> for the rest, it is fine. Oh, in the nights? <laughs> in the nights, okay. I, I take a rest. <laughs> After 12 o'clock, I take a rest. Okay. I'm, I'm uh, a little bit displeased that uh, my subject is not uh, in the mainstream of the other talks, but uh, uh, my, my, my presentation is almost tutorial, so if uh, you uh, want to uh, learn something about games, you can, you can hopefully understand something. Okay, this is a, a very recent paper, so I, I'm, I'm not even sure that it is correct, but I'm pretty <laughs> confident that it is correct. <laughs> Uh, we have to check uh, all final details, and so it is not uh, published yet. And uh, these are two, two, the two my, two my co uh, the two co-authors. Uh, he is a colleague uh, of mine, a young colleague of mine at Polytechnico, and she is uh, uh, she is uh, the student that uh, uh, developed with us uh, in her master thesis uh, uh, this uh, subject. Uh, so. Um, what is the main point? The main point is that uh, uh, when we ha are in a cooperative setting, there is a, a drawback uh, between efficiency and individual rationality. Uh, I will explain uh, better later on, but uh, look at this example. In this example, it is obvious that uh, the solution is 5-5. Five five. Why? Because, for instance, the second player, which chooses uh, uh, the row, uh, chooses the second row. There is no way to, for him to choose something different because 15 is better than 10, so if the second player chooses the first column, uh, for him it is better to choose the, the second row. And if the uh, first play, uh, second player uh, chooses the second column, uh, uh, he will use uh, the second row as well because five is better than three. So second row dominates, strongly dominates the first row, so the first player will choose the second row and uh, accordingly the second player will choose the second row, uh, column, so the result is five, five. Okay? But 10, 10 is much better. And so this is uh, what uh, we call individual rationality, which uh, uh, brings us to 5-5, five five versus uh, uh, efficiency, which brings to 10-10. Ten ten. This is uh, the well-known prisoner dilemma. I wrote not very because the numbers in the prisoner dilemma are different, and here I am maximizing, not minimizing years of jail, but uh, the idea is absolutely the same. So, uh, so um, this, this fact uh, is so disappointing, even if it is everyday life. Uh, we have uh, many examples in everyday life that uh, uh, people fall in this, uh, 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 in this situation rather than in this one, uh, which makes both of them unhappy uh, uh, when they should have the possibility uh, to be more happy. So individual rationality is against efficiency. And this is uh, so important that uh, uh, a Greek guy uh, which is uh, working in, uh, very famous, which is working in Berkeley, is a computer scientist, um, define what is uh, called the gap between efficiency and individual rationality. So uh, we have some social welfare uh, function which is defined and we calculate the maximum on the game of this uh, um, of this uh, uh, welfare function. The game has a lot of compactness because even if we use mixed strategy, so we are in a compact setting. And we calculate either the worst or the best value, E, uh, according to the social welfare function, among the Nash equilibria. And we consider the ratio A over M, E over M. And uh, in the worst case, uh, so when we put uh, E uh, as uh, the, the worst Nash equilibrium, uh, we uh, call it the price of anarchy, 
and uh, in the best case uh, we uh, speak of price of stability. Uh, and this is was defined by Papa Dimitriou with uh, different uh, names, uh, but uh, the, the, the names were ugly, so nobody was taking care of him. But when he decided to, to switch to price of anarchy, he became famous. Not the concept, because uh, Papa Dimitriou is famous as well without this price of anarchy. Okay? Okay, and this uh, price of anarchy or stability can be defined for a single game, but it is more interesting to have it uh, for classes of games, okay? Well, uh, I give you some uh, little example of common welfare function, uh, uh, um, just to give you an idea. Uh, if I have uh, the, that the set S is the, uh, the set of the outcome of the game, and uh, N is the set of the player, and UI is the utility function of player I, so one uh, welfare function is just the sum of the utility of the players, and this is called utilitari utilitarian objective, and and uh, the other one is, is the egalitarian objective. This is the reason why it is red, because it is more left-oriented. So there is, uh, there is uh, some, some philosophy even in the colors. And uh, <coughs> it is simplified. It considered to maximize the minimum welfare. Okay? So th for this reason, it is called egalitarian. Okay, so the perfect situation is when the price of anarchy is exactly one, but uh, this uh, it happens very rarely. And an excellent situation is when the price of stability is exactly one, because this means that at least for, uh, for uh, at least uh, one Nash equilibrium is efficient. Okay? Not all, maybe not all, but one is efficient. Also from the point of view of the society. Okay, so the idea of strong Nash equilibrium, which goes back to Aumann, Robert Aumann, I'm talking only about Nobel Prizes, uh, <laughs> not the, my two colleagues. My colleagues are not Nobel Prizes yet, but, uh, but uh, uh, I'm quoting Nobel Prizes and the, the idea of strong Nash equilibrium. Okay, strong Nash equilibrium is a strategy profile which is stable not only with respect to unilateral deviation of every single player, this is exactly Nash equilibrium, but also respect to uh, unilateral deviation of every sub-coalition of players. When I say sub-coalition, I intend also all players. Okay? So, <coughs> of course, the existence of a strong Nash equilibrium uh, implies, uh, in general, price of stability is equal to one. So, the nice situation, because uh, not only individuals are happy, but when the individuals are happy, also the society is uh, in good uh, shape. Okay. Of course, as the first example uh, was showing, uh, strong Nash equilibria uh, do not exist in general in finite games. I mean, again, I'm uh, talking about uh, uh, pure and mixed strategies. So, I, uh, and Nash equilibria are always there because uh, we know from Nash that uh, Nash equilibria and mixed strategies always exist in finite games, but uh, but the example before showed to you that uh, there are no uh, uh, strong equilibria in that case. Of course, in that case, uh, uh, in the first example, there is only one Nash equilibrium because it is obtained by deleting dominated strategies. So there is no hope to have another uh, even correlated or mixed uh, equilibrium. So the question is, how many games do possess strong Nash equilibrium? This question is rather topological, if you want, and so in some sense I am coming back to the room. And uh, <coughs> the conjecture is that the same, uh, the set of games with strong Nash equilibria is small. Okay, so uh, unfortunately, in many situations, the idea is in many situations we have Nash equilibria, but not strong Nash equilibria. Okay. Okay, let me give you some, uh, some uh, definition. Uh, the, the f this uh, will be the only ugly um, uh, transparency. Uh, the point is that uh, I'm using more than, uh, than two players, but uh, if you want, you can think of two players, and notation are much simpler. 
So um, I have, uh, I have uh, n players and I have uh, the actions of the players and uh, I have the utilities of the players and uh, <coughs> I just use this, uh, these uh, uh, numbers which are not important. What is important is uh, <coughs> uh, how the, to consider the simplex of the mixed strategies of the players and uh, the utility function of the players. This formula is ugly. I don't understand it, but uh, I found it all the time in, in the papers. Uh, what I understand better is that if I have two players, for the first player, is uh, this, uh, okay, if I use strategy, mixed strategy X and you use mixed strategy Y and this is my matrix of payments, this is my payment uh, and your payment will be this because this is uh, the, the matrix of your uh, pay, uh, payoff. Okay, so this is, uh, you see here I have, uh, I, I put uh, this product because I have many players but, uh, but uh, the idea is absolutely simple. It's a just expected value, okay, in the standard sense. Okay, now formal definition, this is a, a, a Nash equilibrium in mixed strategy. Uh, it, uh, this no notation means that uh, I take uh, uh, off from the vector x, uh, I take uh, off the i component and I substitute it with xi, which means exactly that uh, uh, if I am player i, I do not have incentive to deviate given that the other strategies are fixed to another xi because I don't gain anything. So, uh, as I was saying before, a strategy profile is a Nash equilibrium if it is stable with respect to deviation of a single player. Okay, how can I uh, characterize a Nash equilibrium? This is something which is standard, even if it is very difficult to understand to students. Uh, maybe not only to students, it, it was difficult to understand to, for me as well, but it is uh, very simple as an idea, to use it, not to, to understand it. So these are the conditions in order to, uh, under, uh, to characterize uh, a Nash equilibrium. What do they mean? Uh, I, th uh, this means uh, SI is the support of uh, my mixed strategy. So here there is written that if I use a row with positive probability, this row must be optimal. So all row that are used uh, uh, with positive probability must be optimal and must give you the same, which is better than what I get by using other row. Remember that being in a linear setting, if you use a mixed strategy, my best response will be always a, a, a pure strategy, maybe more than one pure strategy. So if I have more than one uh, pure strategy, these, the, the, the strategy that I use are uh, with positive probability necessarily are optimal. The other one are, are not optimal. I take here less or equal because maybe there is an optimal strategy here that I don't use with positive probability. But, but if I use all of them with positive probability, here I will have this. And then, of course, I need to ask that uh, xij is greater or equal to zero because these are probability and the sum must be equal to one because these, these are density. And this is called the indifference principle. I am indifferent among the row that I use with positive probability. Now uh, we switch to Pareto efficiency. I believe that everybody knows what is, is Pareto efficiency. If I have to minimize a function or maximize a function, which is not a single objective function, but I have k objective functions, subject to some uh, uh, con functional constraints, inequality and equality constraints, this means uh, uh, s uh, simply that I use uh, the Pareto idea. So uh, mm, there are I will explain in a second uh, what is uh, Pareto idea is uh, the following. I take, uh, I take uh, a set, what means that it is minimal. Okay, here I wrote uh, maximal, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, if I take the, the quadrant uh, of the non-negative uh, elements, uh, strong efficiency means that x plus P intersected with my set C is only X, and weak efficiency if I take the interior of the cone intersect C is empty. So, for instance, if I am maximizing, this point uh, is efficient because if I take this point and I take the quadrant, here there, is, there are no points of C uh, except this one. Here I, I have weak efficiency 
because if I take the interior of the point, I don't have any, I don't have any point of C. So I can use strong efficiency or weak efficiency. Of course, this is in this particular case, I, I, what I need uh, I, is to have a cone. But here I use, uh, in, in, in this context, uh, I use uh, the, the, the Pareto cone. Okay? So how to characterize, uh, uh, characterize? I have to give a, a necessary condition for Pareto efficiency. Okay, uh, exactly as in uh, in the uh, scalar case, uh, we have uh, so, uh, essentially uh, the, the, the karush kuntaker conditions. Okay, the existence of Lagrange multipliers. So I have some lambda i gradient of FFI. I have uh, mu j uh, for the inequality constraint. I have mu j for the equality constraint. So for the, uh, for the functions and uh, the inequality constraint, I need the condition of non-negativity. Uh, for me, I do not need any uh, negativity condition. And this is a kind of, how do you call it, uh, uh, condition, uh, complement complementarity condition. Okay? So if the, uh, if the, 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 um, uh, the uh, constraint is not saturated, uh, the, the corresponding uh, mu must be zero. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, the machinery I need uh, to uh, to to prove my theorem. But but uh, uh, first of all, I give you the definition of, of it is for me super strong Nash equilibrium is a strategy profile such that it is a Nash equilibrium and its restriction to every su uh, su sub coalition of players is Pareto efficient in the strong sense. So this means that there are no subgroup of players that uh, can switch from this situation to a better situation. A better situation in the sense that there at least one is in a better, si strongly better situation and the other one are uh, at least uh, uh, as well as before. So the necessary conditions are the indifference principle and the KKT conditions for each subcoalition. Okay. <coughs> so uh, the idea, the, the main question is, uh, I, the, the space of all games, of course, is an Euclidean space because I consider exactly the entries of the, my matrix as, uh, as the elements. So it is isomorphic to some uh, Euclidean space, uh, and I consider inside this uh, uh, the, um, the, the set of games uh, which have at least uh, one strong or super strong Nash equilibrium. And my question is, uh, is this set small, for instance, in the bare cat category sense? And uh, of course the answer uh, is no, it is not. Why should be? Uh, if I consider this example, uh, this is a strong uh, equilibrium, uh, this is clear, and if I make small perturbation of these entries, this remains a strong equilibrium. So the, the set of the strong equilibria uh, is not small in the bare category sense. The game is over. Not really, I have some, <laughs> the second part, uh, because this is too, too little even for a master thesis, even if the student had to study something, but it is too little. Uh, there is a, a sequel of the story, which in my opinion is a kind of intriguing. Uh, this example is in, in pure strategies, okay? Uh, can we say something about mixed strategies? So let us forget the pure, strong Nash equilibria. Let us chase for uh, Nash equilibria in mixed strategies, strong Nash equilibria in mixed strategies. Do we have frequently uh, Nash strong Nash equilibria in mixed strategy? So let us uh, 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 switch to the two-player case, okay? Here there is written the two-player case, and so I need uh, only two components, okay? This is my mixed strategy, this is your mixed strategy. And I assume uh, with the indifference uh, uh, principle that the value is zero for both players. This is not a restriction because, uh, because I can add all the time or uh, subtract all the time one constant uh, to, the, to the payment of the players. This does not affect uh, the Nash equilibria, does not affect the strong Nash equilibria, does not affect Pareto efficiency, does not affect anything, only the value. And so I can assume that this is zero, so my formula becomes simpler. S since tech is heavy to handle, zero is sim simple as, as stuff to write down. So, 
this is uh, the use of, uh, uh, here is the tricky idea. I consider at the very beginning a fully mixed Nash equilibrium. This means that I use all strategies, all rows with positive probability, you use all uh, columns with positive probability. In that case, uh, all the, uh, for the complementarity condition, all the non-negativity uh, constraint disappear and the, si the system becomes very easy. Of, uh, I am applying, I am applying uh, the KKT condition at, at the same time I'm using the fact that u y 1 y is, is 0 <coughs> and x transpose u2 is equal to 0. Okay, so the, the system becomes very, very simple. And this gives you an intuition of smallness, probably not to you, but, but to me, yes, if I think a little bit, because I count the equations, okay? I am assuming that this system has a, has a solution. I count the equation, I count the unknown, and I have much more equation than unknown, and so mm, it is uh, likely that the system has a uh, solution for small, you, uh, f uh, small set of u1 and u2, okay? I have four uh, unknown, ten equation, and so the system almost always does not have a solution. But uh, uh, I wanted to go, to go further because uh, in the two-dimensional case the result is very interesting. Uh, by the way, look at this system. This system is, uh, is uh, a linear system. Okay, so, so it is nice, it is obvious to conclude from here that uh, the set of uh, uh, the, the set of games which have uh, um, mixed equilibria um, is uh, small in the bare category sense or also in measure sense, okay? Now I have, uh, uh, I want to go more. Um, okay, the system is linear, but I can do better. Uh, if I have that uh, the system satisfy this, I can prove that the system satisfies two more conditions. So that u1 transpose x1 is equal to zero and u2 x2 is, I don't know why here there are parentheses, is equal to z. So as a consequence, uh, I, have, I have a system that verifies this long string uh, of equation, okay? And from this, uh, first of all, the uh, 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 technical fact uh, which is important uh, uh, is that uh, here both um, lambdas, both uh, multipliers uh, can be chosen non-null. One is non-null uh, for sure, but uh, from the formula that we get uh, later on, the second one uh, is non-null as well. I mean, could be null, but we can change it and still the formula holds. And this simplifies a lot uh, the, the calculation later on. Okay, and uh, the, the, the theorem is, uh, the, the interesting theorem is the following. Let x be a fully mixed strong Nash equilibrium. Then all outcomes in the utility by matrix U lie on the same straight line, having non-positive slope. This maybe tells you nothing, but it is tells a lot to me, and I will explain you why. So. This, this result says, suppose that the equilibrium is fully mixed, okay? So, the payments of the players are in R2, okay? We have two players. So, for instance, like before, we had 10-10, uh, 3-15, uh, 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 5-5, and 15-3, okay? So, I, I consider these four points, they are on the play, okay? Here what I'm saying is that if uh, the uh, Nash equilibrium is strong and fully mixed, then all these must belong to the same line. Okay? Why is it so interesting to me? Because for the following reason, uh, which, is, which is a very good reason, uh, if I change a little bit this, I can move it and make it coming here. What do I, 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 I what uh, am I doing? I'm just making admissible uh, uh, transformation of utilities of the players, not changing Nash equilibria, not changing uh, Pareto efficiency and so on. 
So up to uh, uh, an admissible change in the utility, all the payment lie in this line. But this is a zero-sum game. This is a zero-sum game because my payment is five, your payment is minus five. Well, um, I'm <laughs> this way. Okay, sorry. So minus five, five. Okay, and so on. This is three minus three. So, so this is a zero-sum game. But in a zero-sum game, all Nash equilibria are strong Nash equilibria. Of course, because everything is Pareto there. So this theorem is very nice and in my opinion, sorry, because it is a theorem of mine, but it is very nice because it, it tells you, uh, okay, you have a strong Nash equilibrium in mixed strategy, even only if this is the only trivial case in, in which you have it. Because in that case, it is, it is so. But this is the only possible case. Okay, the only possible case. I have a, a proof, but uh, since I am recorded, I will not show you the proof because it is one third. 30, as if somebody wants to, to discuss with me, uh, I will give you some details later. Um, well, you could ask, uh, you could tell me, you could know some algebraic stuff and tell me, yes, but there are very few games we, in which the, the equilibrium is, uh, is in fully mixed strategies, okay? There are some algebraic constraints, so uh, almost never you use, uh, you use uh, fully mixed uh, equilibria. Well, but, but this theorem, which is a consequence of the, the previous one, is uh, obvious. Uh, the restriction to the, uh, of the, your bimetrix uh, to, the, to the positive, uh, to the support of the matrices must fulfill the same probability. Uh, uh, but, uh, sorry, must fulfill the same, the same theorem, okay? So if I use only, I can have a big bimatrix. You use uh, uh, first and second, I use this one. Okay, this matrix must be zero sum, okay? Okay, this does not look so beautiful as before, but it tells me in any case that the measure, null measure is still true, okay? So, what about more players? Uh, what about more players uh, is an interesting question because, uh, because uh, can we extend the same stuff to more players? If we have three players, for instance, is it true that uh, uh, if, we if I have a fully mixed equilibrium, then, uh, for instance, the payment lie on a plane? Or if I cannot get this, uh, can I at least get that uh, I have still null measure? Well, look at this example. Uh, there are three players. Player one chooses a row, player two chooses a column, player three chooses the matrix. Okay, uh, it is very easy to see that uh, uh, they can use the probability one half, one half, one half, one half, one half, one half. It, it's a lot symmetric, this game, and so, Using equal probabilities for player is a, a Nash equilibrium, actually the only Nash equilibrium of the game. The outcomes do not lie on a plane, and this group of two players and have no incentive to deviate, okay? Well, it is less easy to verify that the three players together do not have as well incentives to deviate. It is less easy, but you can believe me, especially at 1.30. So, so uh, I, I never perform all calculation. I ask uh, at three different people to make calculation on mathematics or something like this, and they are sure. I was sure, but I, I did not want to finish all calculation because they are very long. So, but I, I believe them, so you can believe me. <laughs> okay. Uh, what about the null measure? So the, the theorem cannot be extended to higher dimension, the previous one. Uh, so what about a null measure? Okay, the point, uh, the delicate point here is uh, the fact that uh, when I use, uh, um, when I use uh, KKT conditions, uh, I get a linear system which is overdetermined and so I can conclude the uh, small measure, null measure. But here, unfortunately, the system is not linear. Uh, 
And with a system which is linear, I use Rusche Capelli more or less. Students teach me Rusche Capelli, but if it is not li uh, uh, linear, students continue to teach me Rusche Capelli, but I'm uh, fed up with them because uh, Rusche Capelli does not exist <laughs> for nonlinear systems. So uh, I need to, to understand what happens uh, with two, uh, more than two players. Okay, and here I need something which is very interesting. I, I need some structure which is very interesting. Uh, I call a subset of an Euclidean space algebraic if it can be described as a finite number of a polynomial equation. And semi-algebraic if it can be described as a finite number of polynomial inequalities and inequalities. And a multivalued map is called algebraic or semi-algebraic if its graph is algebraic and sem or semi-algebraic. For instance, this set is algebraic, okay? x squared plus y squared equal to 1, so it is algebraic. Very simple. Uh, consider this, its projection is algebraic? No, it is not. Of course, I cannot describe this uh, with a finite number of equalities, but I can describe it with a finite number of equalities and inequalities. Linear uh, polynomial inequalities. Okay, so this is an example of an algebraic set. This is an example of a semi-algebraic set. This is only the circumference, not the circle. Eh? And this is this, the whole segment. And uh, I will use uh, two very important uh, facts about semi-algebraic multimaps. The first one is not related to maps but uh, to uh, sets and it is exactly the, uh, what I'm saying here. The projection of an algebraic uh, set is always semi-algebraic. This is a very, very difficult theorem to prove. Uh, Alec Joffe, which is a, a great mathematician, analyst, and a friend of mine, says that no analyst can understand the proof of this theorem. Maybe yes, maybe not. This means that he does not understand the proof. <laughs> so I even don't try to understand the proof. And uh, the, what is m more interesting is that if you have a semi-algebraic set valued mapping between two Euclidean spaces, uh, if you have that the dimension of each point is uh, less or equal to k, remember this is a multi-valued map, uh, then uh, for every x, then the domain of the image is less or equal to the domain uh, of A of the space plus k. Okay? In particular, if this is, uh, for instance, is a map, not a multi-map, uh, it tells you that the, the, the dimension of the, of the image is less than the dimension of the uh, space, uh, departure space. Okay? Uh, of course, this is not true uh, for any fu continuous function. Everybody knows that uh, um, an Italian mathematician invented a function defined on the unit interval, which is onto on the unit square. Okay? And it is continuous. So, so, uh, uh, so it violates this theorem. But a uh, semi-algebraic multimap cannot, uh, is not wild in this respect. And so the, the result, I, I, I wrote it for three players because for n it's too complicated. The result is that uh, a fully mixed, but fully, you can delete it, exists only for a negligible set of uh, games. And the idea is just to use the KKT condition for the two players. Okay, for the sub-coalition of two players, and I apply all, all these conditions, and you define, okay, here, so you have a system which is not a linear system, it's a quadratic system, okay? But nevertheless, if I take all these equations, and I consider the map that associate uh, all lines of this equation, and it, they must verify bi, here they must verify one, Okay, uh, these are the, uh, um, this is a semi-algebraic map. I make some little calculation on dimension, and I conclude that the dimension of the image is strictly less than the dimension of the uh, image space, and so the measure must be null. By the way, for semi-algebraic map, bare category, null measure, sparse, uh, sigma porous, all collapse in the same concept. So they are small in every possible sense you can invent. Okay, conclusions. When you're uh, looking for strong Nash equilibria, one can limit the search to pure equilibria because per mixed equilibria do not exist. 
uh, essentially, uh, uh, but in trivial cases. And uh, another observation is that uh, uh, the idea of super strong uh, can be, in some sense, uh, a little bit weakened. Uh, uh, maybe you can imagine that uh, in games with uh, many players, it is difficult to form coalition made by several players. So uh, the, the idea of K strong Nash equilibrium was defined. So uh, deviation are uh, allowed only for coalition of uh, size not greater than k. And actually our, our proof shows that it is enough to have k equal to 2 in order to have smallness, OK? And uh, the result on the two-player case does not hold in the same way for strong Nash equilibria. OK, again, not to be strictly competitive to have a strong Nash equilibrium, but this ha happens only in trivial cases. And since I don't like to put uh, the Thank you for your attention. And I don't want to finish with trivial cases. This is the th third author of the paper, OK? <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, uh, there was uh, Brajon, Gatti. This is Lucchetti, OK? <laughs> <laughs> okay.